So NAB is coming up, we're leaving on Friday, and we're not taking these things with us, but we're going to be talking about these at the Ennis Workshops. Mm -hmm. And you, how many NAB days have you been to? More than 20. So <laughs> When I was a kid, I remember he went to NABs. It's like, oh, yeah. Dad's going to be gone. Yeah. And he came back, and that was the first time I had rock candy. He brought one from one of those conferences. <laughs> yeah, I used to I'm sure it was stuff. like, he's in the airport, he's like, how am I going to get the kids to be happy when I get back? You know? mm -hmm. Give him something. So, uh, yeah, but this fun. will be my first NAB. Yeah, I've I know. I'm to, excited for you. It's pretty yeah, fun. It's I've pretty been to fun. a bunch of different conferences, but never a broadcast conference, yeah. even though that was my first job well, was interning as yeah. an engineer. And, and it's not like open source. It's very different than that. These are like hardcore corporate. products. There's a lots of products. You know, I remember the first one I went to, it's like, oh, that's a helicopter. Yeah. And there's satellite dishes out in the parking lot that you could go up and play with and hit the buttons and make a move. And I loved all that. And, and you still can do that today. They have uh, like one of the big booths, Blackmagic, Sony's there. You could play yeah. with their stuff. You can I know, turn I've on. been getting a lot of emails. I, we have aperture lighting here. And they're like, oh, come see our stuff. It's like, I don't need to spend more money on lighting. I mean, maybe, but. You always do. That's yeah. what I've heard. Anyway. Yeah, but we're bringing these things, uh, mm -hmm. it, talking about them, because we've found that these do not transport that well inside of a backpack or anything, mm -hmm. uh, but they do transport, and they're mini racks. Mm -hmm. And when I when I first saw one of these from uh, DeskPy, these are from DeskPy. You can get them from many vendors. This is not sponsored or anything, but um, I, I immediately thought, like, there's like 25 things I can do with this mm -hmm. that are way more fun and interesting and it fits on your desk. Mm -hmm. And so I started talking to you about it. We started talking about, you know, broadcast radio, home labs, right. uh, remote tower sites, things like that. And so mm -hmm. I built a few. I built some with Raspberry Pis, and this is my time setup. It's my, I'm calling it my time lab. That's my time setup. Well, so. yeah, but when you need more precise time than your watch, <laughs> when you need nanoseconds or picoseconds or femtoseconds, mm -hmm. I'm not quite to that level, but we're getting there. And then you worked on a broadcast rack. So I had a practical application for these because I build, uh, we have the 43 transmitter things that we deal with at Covenant Network and the, uh, the need to go to a place and have a package thing is really good because then I can send out someone less qualified than a full engineer and it works. Right now we use a mix of everything from volunteers to uh, contractors. And, uh, and packaging the stuff up and have it go out there is easy. And if you're driving a vehicle, this will fit in that vehicle a lot easier. And I can test it all out before I send it. So yeah. if I can pack the right stuff in, send it to a site, it'd be great. So that was what this uh, resulted from. Yeah. And for me, it's, uh, you know, th th my idea is this will eventually be the time kit for this building. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be doing some fun stuff with PTP, NTP, mm -hmm. PPS, and all kinds of stuff. Broadcast AES67. I mean, your rack has some of that stuff. It does have So some. I'm not ready for it yet, but we mm -hmm. could plug this into that, and this mm -hmm. could become the Grandmaster That's server. what we're thinking. So... Uh, anyway, we, we'll, we'll walk through these racks really quick. I, you, you can grab the camera, and then uh, yeah. I'll talk about mine, and okay. you talk about yours. All right, that'll work. So I actually did a full video on this setup. This is uh, a Raspberry Pi with something called the Time Hat. It's a little board from a, a little group called Time Appliances that makes open source uh, hardware and Linux compatible things for building PTP grandmasters and NTP servers and taking in various time sources and feeding them out to everything. And this is a clock from Master Clock that I also talk about in that video. And right now I have it set up for everything except for PTP. I had some issues with that and the networking that I'm working through. But the nice thing is I can take this with me. I can bring it home. I can put it on my desk when I'm working on it in depth. I can put it in my little rack. I have a slide out shelf that I can stick it on. And it's useful because you, when you're building something out, you need to take it out fix things and put it back in. Uh, but in this portable setup, I have a little, little GPS antenna so I can go put it out somewhere that it can get a signal. In here, there's metal everywhere. It cannot get a GPS signal. Um, and then it's feeding my network uh, NTP time to this clock. So it, it's really cool to have this compact setup and it's all using power over ethernet, which is nice too. Now this setup doesn't have it, uh, but I, I just have a network input and then power input. But you can actually buy uh, some switches that have PoE input. So you could have this powered off of one Ethernet cable with network and power, which is really cool. Anyway, you know, just every time I build one of these out, I think of a couple new things that I could do or some ways to make this hardware a little bit easier to build into these things. Um, and that's, that's why I love it. My project was uh, related to uh, being able to take something out to a tower site, the value, and there's so many things like 
if I had a problem at a particular tower site, send something out there and I can plug it in really quickly, get on the air, audio is good, processing is good, and then I can work on whatever I want. And the other thing is upgrading. I can upgrade by taking a rack out, putting it in there, and the whole upgrade is already tested and in, in, in the rack. And so I want to do things like I've got a remote control, I've got uh, audio devices for uh, ingesting audio, main and backup, a uh, silent sensor into an audio processor, and uh, that audio processor feeds out to an FM transmitter, and I could change out different pieces here. I could change out the Axia gear to, to get a, uh, a Comrex or some other IP connection device that's more specific. Uh, and uh, the only thing I need is a transmitter and uh, maybe an EAS machine, depending on how you do your EAS, whether you originate at the studio or at the transmitter site. And, and maybe some uh, power management, because right yeah, now... Yeah, power management. Here's what I want down here. Here's what I want down here is a UPS. That's yep. the, and I've got one. It's just that if I took those out, I'd put a UPS in there that I already have, and then I would have a UPS with uh, whatever watts of things and maybe a... Um, what do you call it, the solar power, maybe solar power, I don't know. Uh, but, uh, but what, what about the top of the rack too? So at the top, so this is uh, Cradle Point, which a lot of broadcast guys are familiar with the Cradle Point systems. They, they uh, bring you internet, you can feed in a, a, a fiber circuit or whatever, ethernet jack in the back. It, cr it has two places for chips, so you could have AT&T, Verizon, <clears throat> uh, T-Mobile, and then you can have multiple networks all through that feeding your system. So. That's pretty cool, but everybody's going to have their, their own rack. Like we actually use the network only, the cellular, and then we usually try to get a fiber or some other circuit in and we bring in to a uh, firebox uh, unit. So that's another thing in here, that taller box you found, <laughs> one more, two more racks, and I'd be putting that stuff in the rack too. So very happy with the playing around I've done. I reconfigured it a few times. And, uh, and you can also jack right into it with a laptop. So if you're on yes. site, you yep. plug in and you have the full network stack. Yeah, and you can see, though, we got the little Raspberry Pi there. So that's a, that's the way I can remotely get in. And any web interface, I can get to that for sure. And uh, some of that <coughs> Linux-oriented software, like a transmitter that happens to have a password and root login, you know, it's like you can get into that too. And mm -hmm. you can get into trouble. And you also checked the power consumption for this whole rack. I did. I had my son check that, and I think he said it was 26 watts or something like well, that. Well, it's starting up 26. It got up to 35 watts. And 35 watts peak, and what, idled at 26? So 34. 34. Yeah. So 34. So 34 watts, but it's, uh, you know, POE time. Get rid yeah. of all those Yeah, my, my suggestion <laughs> is all these vendors, every one of these boxes, have a POE input. Yeah. Then, uh, then we don't have to have all these power bricks. We can keep all the power at uh, 48 volts. Yeah, much more would, efficient. That would be another interesting. And thing. just have one switch at the top of the rack. Yeah, we do have one vendor. I must say that does have the POE. Yeah, it could go right now. Yeah, so. that's also the vendor with the PTP input too. And, and the most meters on the front. So <laughs> you gotta like it. And then did did you want to you want to you I, I have my uh, thermal camera here. Do you want to take a glance and see how that's looking too? Yeah. So we got the we got the thermal camera. Yeah, it's, we got the thermal camera. It's always fun. I always look at stuff with thermal cameras nowadays because you just because you can. It's very easy. But you can see here. The highest temperature we're seeing so far is around 42 C, and I can get the board temperatures off of it to compare to. And then uh, you've got, uh, you were talking about like this hole right there and where the USB thing yeah. is. You know, yeah, that's like kind seeing of inside the device. Yeah, see it in there, and then that could be the reflectiveness because it is a silver surface, but yeah. this surface next to it is identical. Well, it looks identical. I wonder if they're using <laughs> a different like material. Look at that, the two barracks boxes. You can tell yeah. they're different. Yeah. So just a fun thing that you see on thermal camera sometimes. That you don't see elsewhere. And you can see that hot little fellow there. Yeah, the cradle point's that getting cradle point. nice But it's, again, it's like if, if it's 40 degrees C, yeah, not too bad. This is bad. a little warmer than like the room I use at my house. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, you can see the that that should run cool there too. Yeah. And then around so. the back though, so you had a couple interesting things. I, I wanted to see the thermals because you have in your remote sensing capabilities up here. Oh yeah, I have a temperature probe. You have a temperature probe. So and some of this equipment has it too. So even if you're deploying this remote, you can get the room temperature. See if your yeah, AC is dead. Yeah. So there's 26, and that's about where it was when I checked it a little bit ago. The uh, remote control. Uh, so I'm right on the probe there and 26.1, 25.9. So it was right about 80, I think, on your, because uh, these lights and things in here. But yeah, it is always interesting to see, you know, like, like again, where it looks like, are we seeing into that jack, seeing higher temperatures than we see outside. 
But I, I think, 23. to me, that's a cool thing because, again, if you're thinking about deploying this thing out to remote sites where a volunteer might come pick it up, put it out there, plug mm -hmm. it in, there's only power plugs, which you could consolidate to one right. plug, yeah. and a network plug from your fiber or whatever into right. there. Yeah. And if you do that, then you, you already have room temperature, so you can monitor that and say, like, hey, AC is down, you know, yeah. Without, yeah, exactly. without having to install something <clears throat> on the site. Yep, that's exactly right. The, uh, the, the whole thing here, the, the remote control unit there will give me temperature, audio. I can send audio into it and listen to it remotely. I can dial into it. I can go to a web page. It emails, texts, so forth. And so does the audio switcher. <clears throat> and uh, the, uh, I can get in and do the same thing with the um, audio processor, too. I can remotely manage it. So and if I send a good clean feedback, I can get a great feel on my uh, audio processor, get a tuner in there and stuff like that. So we'll be talking about these at NAB and uh, a couple other, I've, I've built a couple other, you might have noticed it in the background. There's some other builds that I've done back here with these racks. I built and the an, tall one, look at that thing. Yeah, yeah there is. That this might is be the, the one I need, Jeff. This is the new one that they are, uh, they just introduced and they also have this, so this is called the TT. It's not actually out yet. But its little party trick is it works like that, or you can turn it on its side and readjust these handles on the top. And then it is a, uh, I think it's a 6U, 6U, like 6 inch unit. So mm -hmm. quarter size rack, which is interesting because some devices like these barracks boxes and things would fit in there. So you could have even a smaller compact thing than that, like basically half that size. It's, I, I don't know how small we can get with these things, but. Yeah. And I, I should tip out that this, these guys have been a lifesaver for me. Uh, <clears throat> so I'll come off the remote control, depending on the transmitter, but I can use a D connector. I can do independent wiring here. The pins are all labeled out and uh, send it off with the cable. Pretty Without easy. Without a soldering iron. Without a soldering iron. That's pretty good. So while Dad is uh, getting some of these dashboards up for B-roll, uh, I just wanted to say that we'll be at NAB on the show floor this weekend. So if, if you're at NAB, come and say hi if you see us somewhere. And if you're not and you're watching this afterwards, then, you know, maybe we'll be there next year. So see you then.